I cannot believe six months have already come and gone. That's wild. So today we're going to be doing the mid-year freakout tag. This is going to be the first time I'm doing this tag on my channel and I'm so excited. Like I've seen so many other booktubers do this and now it's my turn. If you're new here, hello, my name is Kat. We talk about books on my channel. I do book hauls, try to do reading vlogs. I'm so happy that you clicked on my video and I hope you choose to stick around. All right, let's dive into these questions. I have my handy dandy iPad because I don't remember the questions. Question number one is the best book I've read so far. This this one's kind of tough because there's a few I wanted to pick but I also don't want to pick a bunch of books for each of the questions so for the best book that I've read this year that I can't stop thinking about and that I just know at the end of the year is going to be on my like favorites of 2023 is the friend by sigrid nunez this one i absolutely loved i still think about it i didn't realize how much i was going to love it i knew going into it i would enjoy it but it did definitely take me by surprise how much i loved this book i had something very specific in my mind on what i thought this book was gonna be and it wasn't that and it was just like so much better than what i would have expected the friend is easily on that list when i got to this question i was like oh i know exactly what i'm gonna put in that category it's basically about a woman who loses a friend and that friend had a great dane so now she has to take that dog in and kind of care for it and we just watch that relationship and what it's like but there's so much more than that there's so many different layers to this book it's not just about that relationship there's just a lot of discussions in this book that made me really think a lot so i really i love this book easily a favorite Okay, so the next question is best sequel of 2023. By default, this one just wins because it's the only sequel I've read this year. I don't really read a lot of books that are sequels or that are part of series. It's Us Against You by Frederick Bachman. This is the second book in the Bear Town series. I really liked it. There's something about Frederick Bachman's writing that's very like, hmm, I don't know how to describe it, but like, I've read so many of his books that it's very like comfortable for me I guess where I know exactly what to expect when I'm reading a Frederick Bachman book. He has a very like distinct writing style. The way he writes about characters and the way he kind of pulls you in but then there's like some t twists and turns and he kind of takes you for a ride. There's like so many characters and somehow he manages to like do them all justice and you become very much so attached to all the characters so this one was really good. I enjoyed it even though I don't care about hockey. There's one more book in the series that I need to read and I just haven't picked it up yet. I don't know. We'll see if I get to it this year or if I'll save it for next year. This is the one that wins and you know, it's a good series. The next question is new releases you haven't read yet but want to. There's just so many. So I'm just gonna list them off. Of course, I don't own any of them because why would I? I really want to read Roots by Diz Tate, The Bandit Queens by Perini Shroff, YN by Esther Yee, What Happened to Ruthie Ramirez by Claire Jimenez, and Far Away World by Patricia Engel. I read Infinite Country and I loved that one. So really excited for that one. That one's a short story collection so we'll see how I feel about it okay question number four is most anticipated release for the second half of the year and I have no idea because I'm so bad at knowing what's coming up. I feel like I just like I'm really bad about keeping track of that. I get very easily overwhelmed and there's already so many books that I currently want to read that the thought of like looking forward and seeing what's coming out it stresses me out. I don't have an answer for this one so yeah. That's, I'm not sure. No idea. Question number five is biggest disappointment. Ooh, this one was kind of tough for me because I feel like there wasn't any that like really stood out to me as like super disappointing except one. I think this one would fall into that category because I was so excited for it. Like I, I had so many like, ooh, I think I'm going to really enjoy this book. Like I keep seeing so much hype around it and then I didn't really love it and that's Big Swiss by Jen Began. Partially it's me not necessarily like caring for that that genre of like the unhinged white woman <laughs> necessarily. I don't know there's something about it that I haven't been enjoying lately like there's no part of me that really wants to read more of like that genre so I feel like that's also part of it but I know that there's lots of people that love it there's lots of people that hate it so I feel like it's just 
a big divide. It was just mid for me. Like I didn't, I didn't like hate it, but I also just didn't love it. So I guess that's, that would be my biggest disappointment just because I was so excited and I really thought I was going to love it way more than I did. Question number six is biggest surprise. And I feel like I'm going to put two. I had one, but I think I'm going to put two in there. The first one I'm going to say is Fever Dream by Samantha Schweblin. I've heard great things. I've heard great things about Samantha Schweblin, but there was part of me that was a little bit nervous on how how I would feel about it. I didn't know if it was going to be one of those books where like, because I don't really know what's going on, it was going to go way over my head and I just wasn't going to enjoy my time with it. But I very much so enjoyed this one. I keep forgetting that there's a film based off this one and I really want to watch it. So I need to like make a mental note to myself. Future Cat, well, make sure you watch this. I'm so curious to see how the adaptation is. I feel like it would be a really good one. So this is one. And then the next one, I gotta say The Friend because I went into it thinking I was going to enjoy it, maybe like it, but I just like loved it way more than I expected. And it was a book, like I said, that was so much more than what I thought it was gonna be. So I gotta say The Friend. I feel like I don't know if there's like any other times I mentioned this one, but... I love this book so much. All right, question number seven is favorite new author. So this is either a debut author or new to you. And I have three for this one. So first up has got to be Miriam Toes. Not Miriam Tobes, Miriam Taves. I read Fight Night last year and I loved this book so much. It was a favorite from last year. So I knew I wanted to read more from Miriam, but this year I read women talking absolutely love this one as well and i feel like i just want to read more from her and i'm so excited to read like her backlist i think she's just very smart in the way she writes the way she sprinkles humor in this one made me laugh out loud and i feel like that's something that's really hard to do i just like love these books so much i could talk forever about them but Miriam Taves has like cemented herself as a favorite author of mine and I'm so excited to read more from her. Two other authors that I also wanted to mention because they're new to me. I, this is the first time that I've read either of them. First one is Elena Fronte. I am so excited to read more from her. This one just like blew me away with the writing. The way this book made me feel is just like a different level. Like I've never read a book that made me feel so, 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 so stressed out, but also the writing of it was so beautiful. Like I loved her writing style. I want to read so much more from her. But yeah, this one, great starting point. So many feelings were had with this one. Basically there's the main character and her husband wants a divorce. So we kind of follow her as she's dealing with what that's like for her and him starting a new relationship with another woman. She also has two children and a dog. It's a ride. <laughs> I couldn't read this in one sitting. It just like stressed me out too much, but you might be able to. It is a short book. Just keep in mind it's it can be very heavy and it can be very stressful. I think she's just so talented just from this like one book. So I'm so excited to read more from her. And then I gotta say Annie or no, this is the first book I've read from her. She's another one that I feel like captured feeling so well. Her writing isn't very like flowery, but those lines, they like hit. They they are good. So I'm so excited to read more from Annie. Yeah, that's all I really have to say. These books, it's just so funny because they're very like in conversation with each other where it's both about women who are no longer with their partner and that grieving process and what it's like. So I really enjoyed the fact that I read this one and then this one after because it kind of reminded me of each other and I loved that. Question number eight is newest fictional crush. I don't have one. <laughs> I was like going through my list in Storygraph to see like all the books I've read and who might be a potential fictional crush and I couldn't come up with anyone. So I'm sorry for this question. I don't have anyone. Okay, so question number nine is newest favorite character. I had to double check that I was saying that right. I have a few. So the first is the unnamed narrator in The Seas. I loved her so much. I loved being in her brain. I just thought she was a very sweet character, very naive. And I, I don't know, there was just something about her that I just wanted to like hold and like protect. So 
gotta say, our unnamed narrator in the seas. And women talking, I have a few favorites. I loved August. I loved Ona. I loved Salome. Honestly, at some point, I think I loved all those characters. They all had such like distinct personalities. Those characters, they were like such favorites of mine, especially August. There was just something about August that I really loved that character. I loved all of them together. All the scenes, they just like worked so well. Those are my favorite characters from Women Talking. Here it is again. <laughs> The friend. I absolutely loved Apollo. I also loved the main narrator and like some of her thoughts and some of the things she was saying. I thought she was really funny. Honestly, both of those characters in this book, I really, really loved. All right, question number 10 is a book that made you cry. I haven't had any books this year that have made me cry. So that hasn't happened for me yet. I will say the closest to crying here it is again, <laughs> the friend. I feel like this one definitely had me like but not a bunch of tears, like I was not sobbing. So this is the closest one for me. The friend has come up in so many categories and I'm like, it makes sense that this is my favorite. Okay, and now switching it up, a book that made you happy. This one was so easy for me. It was Thieves by Lucy Bryan. This book I read when I was just having a, a bit of a rough day. This was just like the perfect read for me. It was so fun. It was so funny. It was so sweet. It's about Ella and Madeline and they start dating and they start going to parties. There's some tasks that need to get done. I don't want to say anything even though I mean the title. <laughs> it was just such a fun little adventure. I loved the characters in this one. The artwork I loved it so much. It was just so comforting to read. Ugh, I loved it so much and it made me really happy. I highly recommend this one if you're looking for something that's happy and fun and a little adventure. Loved this one. All right, question number 12 is most beautiful book you've bought so far this year. That's probably going to have to go to these two graphic novels. I'm assuming now that I'm thinking about it, I think it's like most beautiful like book cover. That's just totally my assumption. Now that I'm thinking about it, I'm like, maybe it's like beautiful story. But these are the two that I picked. I picked Thieves by Lucy Bryan and I picked In Limbo by Deb J.J. Lee. I mean, these are the most beautiful books I own, I think. I love the artwork on both of them. Like I said, I love the artwork in Thieves. And I just finished this one last night. Absolutely loved it. It was very beautiful. It's Deb J.J. Lee's memoir. I feel like they did such a great job with their art and really displaying like those feelings and certain scenes like oh, were so impactful just by the art. Loved it. These are definitely the two most beautiful books I own. Oh, there's one more. I totally forgot. I kept telling myself that I was probably going to forget this one because I didn't like write it down. Mod Martha by Gwendolyn Brooks. This is a beautiful book. The story, I think it's absolutely beautiful, but the cover as well. I love it. It's the most beautiful one. This is probably one of my most prized possessions on my bookshelves. I know this is like a special edition. I think it was like an anniversary edition of Mod Martha. So very much so loved this book. Oh my God. Okay. We've gotten to the last question. Question 13. What books do you need to read by the end of the year? I feel like what books do I not need to? All the books I've hauled, all the books that are on my shelves that I just haven't gotten to ever. So some ones that are like stand out. Let's see. Let me gather them. One of the first ones on that list is Mean by Miriam Gerba. This is a memoir. I've heard it's like funny, I think, but also like very heavy. So I really want to read this one. It's been on my shelves for a while. I don't know why I haven't read it because I've only heard great things about it. So hopefully this year. This is probably no surprise to anyone because if you've watched my haul video, and I feel like I've mentioned it a few other times, Home Going by Yagyasi. I need to read this by the end of the year. I will be so upset if I don't. Honestly, any James Baldwin. I have Giovanni's room right here. I'm hoping to read it this summer. I talked about it in my summer TBR. James Baldwin. I need to read this one. More Toni Morrison. I've only read Sula so far. So this year I would have liked to at least read one of these. I have Beloved and I have The Bluest Eye. The Bluest Eye is on my summer TBR. So I'm hopeful that I'll get to it this year. I really want to start the Neapolitan Quartet. This one is also on my summer TBR video. So I'm trying to make moves. I'm trying to get to these books. Another one that has been on my shelf for so long is Stories from the Tenants Downstairs by Sadiq Fofana. And 
I don't know why I haven't read this one yet. I've heard such great things and I have it, so I should read it. I am so excited for this one. I just don't know why I haven't picked it up. So hopefully by the end of the year, this one will also be read. But yeah, we did it. Those are all the questions for the mid-year freak out tag. I think it's called the freak out tag. Either way, this was so much fun to like look back and see where I'm at with books, what I've read, what are some of my favorites, and kind of like be reminded of all the different books that I've read this year. And I feel like this year has been a pretty good reading year for me. It definitely feels like I know a bit more about like what books I like to read and what I enjoy. This was so much fun. I can't believe I got to do the mid-year freak out tag. Hopefully next year I'll be doing the same. Thanks again so much for being here. I really appreciate every single one of you that watches my video that subscribed. It feels really nice to have a little community and I just love sharing and talking about books with you all. I don't know why. I think it's because it's like six months since I started posting on booktube that I'm feeling I'm feeling so like giddy and excited at the fact that I'm still posting on booktube. I think it's really cool. I'm just so grateful for each and every one of you. Thank you so much for being here. I would love to know some of these questions for you. Like what has been your best read of 2023? What's been your biggest disappointment? What books are you hoping to get to before the end of the year? I'd love to chat about it. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you in the next one. Bye.